Yep. Okay, if I could, we'd like to bring this meeting to order. Um, we do have some commission members that uh, have other obligations this evening, and uh, we don't have a long agenda, so I'd like to uh, move forward so we can hopefully make sure they make their, their other obligations. Um, this is the March 14th, 2019 meeting of the Jefferson City Planning and Zoning Commission. My name is Chris Jordan, and I'm the chairman of this commission. I would like to remind everyone uh, here this evening in the audience, as well as uh, our staff and other folks, commission members, to silence your electronic devices. Um, anyone speaking, uh, please come to the microphone. Uh, I'll ask that you state your name and address for the record, uh, as well as us up here, if we would remember to turn on our microphones and speak clearly and loudly so that everyone can hear us. The meeting is being recorded so that everyone is aware of that. With that, we will start with introductions. Uh, good evening, Commission members. Carlos Graham, City Council Liaison to this Commission. Michelle Mahoney. Mike Lester. Penny Quigg. Ann Strotman, City Staff. Blake Marcus. Bunny Tricky Cotton. Chris Yarnell. Hank Vogt. Shane Wade, City Staff. Uh, Eric Barron, the Planning Manager. I would like to introduce uh, Beth Sweeten, uh, located on the other side of the room here. Uh, Beth is the um, uh, newly appointed administrative assistant for our department and is taking over the duties of uh, Ann. And so she will be the, um, the person making harassing phone calls to you on the days of meetings to make sure that, that you're, you're in attendance and, uh, and serve as a point of contact for you, of course. Um, Beth comes to us from the Department of Public Works. Uh, so we, we stole her away. And uh, so she is familiar with City Hall and, and the, the, the employees and issues that, that come in through the door. So nice. Welcome aboard, Beth. We appreciate it. Look forward uh, for you taking over. Um, I don't know if this is the proper way of saying you got big shoes to fill. Uh, Anne has done an excellent job for this commission. Uh, sad to see her go. Um, she's kept us in line and done a great job. So we look forward to having you here. Thank you. Looking forward right. to it as well. Ian Zollinger, city staff. Sonny Sanders, city staff. Brian Wolford, city staff. Anna Nanoski, city staff. Thank you. Um, procedural matters. The city code authorizes nine regular members and three alternates. Alternates are designated to vote upon the absence or disqualification of a regular member or alternate. A quorum of five members or alternates is necessary to conduct business. Um, is there any members tonight that will be disqualifying themselves from any agenda item? I'm seeing none there. The following members are absent tonight. Dale Vaughn, Dean DeToy, and Jack Deacon. That will leave us with Bunny Tricky Cotton, Michael Lester, Michelle Mahoney, Blake Marcus, Chris Charnell, Hank Vogt, Penny Quigg, and we currently have one vacant alternate. Um, once again, we do have uh, a quorum this evening. Uh, next, we will move on to a call for cases. Uh, we have two cases tonight that are um, presented by the same consultant and are the basically uh, some part of the same property. We have case number P19010, the 700 block of Sardonyx Drive. It's a rezoning from RS-2 to C-2 and a comprehensive plan amendment, as well as Part of this property is case number P19011, Sardonyx Drive. It is the final subdivision plat of Pringer Ridge subdivision. I do believe the consultant and owner are here. Is that correct? Thank you. Um, we have not received any requests for continuance. No. Okay. Is there any reason to reorder the agenda this evening? No. Thank you. Um, Ian, if you would, please, please read the format of the hearing and order of <coughs> testimony. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to briefly describe the procedures of the commission. The proceedings of the meeting are being recorded, so please step forward to the microphone when, you're, when, you're, when you speak and give your name and address for the record. The standard order for each case is as follows. After the introduction of the request by city staff, the applicant or their consultants will provide information on the request. The opening presentation by the applicant uh, shall be limited to 10 minutes unless additional time is granted by the commission. 
The applicant shall have three additional minutes for closing testimony if requested. We will then ask to hear from supporters of the request. We will then ask to hear from opponents of the request. We will then ask to hear from anyone else who wishes to speak on the request. Testimony shall be limited to three minutes each unless additional time is granted by the Commission. City staff will then make their recommendations on the request. In order to reduce the time necessary to hear an application, references to printed material including staff reports and applicable findings shall not be read into the record unless directed by the Commission. The Commission will close testimony from the floor. The Commission will then discuss the proposal, then publicly make its determination with reasons. The form of the motion shall be positive, that is, the motion shall be made to accept the request as presented or with modifications, stipulations, or conditions. A final vote will be taken with ayes in favor, nays opposed. The Chairman shall announce the results of the vote, specifying the number of votes cast in favor and the number of votes cast against. Uh, the following documents are entered as exhibits for all items under consideration at this meeting. The City Code of the City of Jefferson as amended the comprehensive plan map and land use map, uh, copies of the applications under consideration, a list of property owners uh, of whom notices were sent, the affidavit of publication of the public notice in the newspaper, copies of drawings, plans, and or renderings under consideration, letters or Miranda from staff, staff reports, minutes of proceedings, correspondence or other materials submitted by the public or the applicant, Rules of Procedure for the Jefferson City Planning and Zoning Commission. These items are public record and available for inspection in the Department of Planning and Protective Services or through the Office of City Clerk. Please be advised that any items are, that are presented, distributed, or otherwise received pertaining to the cases under consideration become the property of the Commission. This includes any photographs, drawings, petitions, and letters. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ian. Um, we will move to a motion to adopt the agenda as printed when someone is ready. Uh, I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All approved. All opposed. Motion carries. What's our number? Motion carries seven to zero. Um, I entertain a motion to approve uh, the minutes from our regular meeting of February 14th uh, when someone is ready. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed? Motion carries again, seven to zero. Uh, we do have some communications this evening. Um, we have two letters of communication uh, from the owners at 725 Sardonic Drive and 905 Sardonic Drive. Those have been provided to the commission this evening and I'm sure the commission members have looked through those prior to the meeting. And they are regarding uh, the, the cases that we have this evening, case number P19010 and case number P19011. We'll move on to new business. Um, this evening, we are going to combine both cases for clarity, I think is the, the good way of doing this. So what we've asked the consultant to do this evening is come up and we're going to ask them to present both cases at one time. The first case is for the rezoning. The second case is for the subdivision plat. Uh, ultimately, they are two separate items. But again, uh, I think for clarity for, for everyone involved, uh, we've asked the consultant to describe the subdivision and then also describe the request for rezoning. Um, when the consultant is done, we will ask for anyone in the audience who would like to speak on either item, whether it is regarding the rezoning or the subdivision. Um, when we close testimony uh, for both of those items, we will vote on each of one of those each one of those items separately. So again, then we will vote on the rezoning, and then we will vote on the subdivision following that. So. Uh, 
uh, bear with us it's a little bit different than we normally do even for the Commission members and those in the audience but I think for clarity reasons again that would be the best with that uh, we will open with our new business and public hearing um, we're going to introduce case number P19010 the 700 block of Sardonyx Drive it is a rezoning from RS-2 to C-2 a and comprehensive plan amendment as well as case number P19011 Sardonyx Drive it is the final subdivision plat of Pringer Ridge subdivision um, Ian I think what we'll do is let you start with your information uh, and report on both cases sure thank you mr. chair so I will begin uh, to discuss the um, the, res the subdivision plan because uh, I feel that it'll make a lot of sense when we put it all together um, so back in the, the location of the subdivision plan and rezoning uh, is is noted here on uh, the the map um, at the end of Sardonyx Drive which is just located north of Edgewood uh, west of 179 and south of South 10 Mile Drive and 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 um, Missouri Boulevard uh, the current zoning of the entire property is RS2 um, as well as a portion of the property that's involved in the the subdivision uh, is zoned uh, C2 general commercial um, back in December 2018 um, a preliminary and and sketch uh, subdivision plat were approved by the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, this sketch plat here and it's oriented a little bit differently with north being over here you have south 10 mile drive here uh, south you have Edgewood and 179 here on the bottom um, this sketch plat shows um, the the future connectivity of, of the, the subdivision um, the portion of the subdivision that was approved as a preliminary plat is here um, and then it, this is a uh, what what could be um, the future connectivity showing the sardonyx drive wrapping down back down into weather hill uh, and going back down into edgewood um, the preliminary plat um, as was presented that night is here um, oriented the same way um, this end towards Missouri Boulevard and this end towards Edgewood uh, shows 35 single-family uh, residential lots um, and the way that the property was divided um, it was divided um, to be developed in a, in a way that was uh, that works with the land uh, this this is a ridge line that follows up um, to the north and the road um, be sitting on top of that allows for lots on on either side um, and what was left is you have this reserve tract here reserve tract A um, and then you have reserve tract B um, and this is the the final plat that reflects that um, Reserve Tract A here, which is the subject of the rezoning, uh, and Reserve Tract B, uh, which is currently zoned C2, a general commercial. And so I'd just like to go back over the uh, the rezoning portion of 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 the request, the sep the, the request to to rezone the property. Like as was said before, the, the the entire property is zoned RS2 single family residential. Um, here we have what is called the development plan map of the comprehensive plan, uh, which um, helps lay out the future uh, land use possibilities of of Jefferson City, uh, which zoning is based. Uh, and this portion here, highlighted in yellow or gold, uh, is the portion. Uh, to be rezoned or it is reserve tract um, A as mentioned earlier um, as you can see or maybe not see but the there is a portion of reserve tract A 
which is designated by the development plan map of the comprehensive plan to be commercial. Um, red is red is commercial here. And the, the current zoning of the property has commercial um, bordering uh, the property line. Uh, the intent, uh, the, the purpose of the, the application, uh, the proposal, uh, is to rezone that entire piece to commercial for future expansion of, of uh, possible future expansion of commercial businesses along on here on South 10 Mile or Missouri Boulevard. Um, because the way that the property is laid out, um, it, it would be difficult to, to access that portion of the property from the proposed uh, subdivision as, as shown here on the proposed rezoning plan. Um, And uh, the applicant and their consultant are here to answer any questions, and I would be happy to answer any questions about the proposals. Thank you, Ian. Uh, appreciate your presentation on both of those. Uh, do any of the commissioners have any questions for Ian at this point? Okay. Uh, Shane, do you have anything to add to either one of these cases? Uh, Mr. Chairman, not at this time. I'll defer to after the presentation from the consultant to okay. report on my, okay. my staff report. All right. Thank you. Would someone like to come up and present the case, please? If you would, state your name and address for the record. Patrick Kramer, Central Missouri Professional Services, 2500 East McCarty Street. Um, I'd like to thank Ian. He did a good job of explaining the subdivision plat and how it's laid out, so I'll skip over some of my notes on that. Um, so the final plat shows an extension of Sardonyx Drive ending in a cul-de-sac ball with an additional right-of-way along Lot 19 to allow future expansion. Um, if you refer to the sketch plat, which, which Ian kind of went over, but I'd like to reiterate some of these points. If you refer to the sketch plat provided, the intent is to eventually extend Sardonyx back to Emerald Lane and ultimately back to West Edgewood Drive. Um, this is, there is definitely no intent to connect Sardonyx Drive to South 10 Mile Drive with this development. Doing so would make Sardonyx a cut through to an already congested intersection and area in the city. So any devi deviation from the submitted sketch plat that was submitted in December would have to be approved to the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, again. So um, an important, and if you would uh, skip to maybe the aerial, folder, the aerial photo I gave you guys. You have an aerial view? And it's, it's the handout I basically gave. That next one, that one right there. So an important point, part of this is that the end of Sardonyx ends within the RS2 zoning district. And the tract B is still currently zoned as C2. So in order to make that connection to South 10 Mile Drive, a case would have to be represented to the Planning and Zoning Commission and ultimately the City Council to propose that, that connection. Um, so you, at that time, you'd be opening a whole other case that would really probably be a pretty intense uh, discussion to have. So the street for, of Sardonyx, Sardonyx Drive will be 33 foot. It's, it matches the existing profile that's there now, and it allows parking on one side of the street. Per the city code, sidewalks will be constructed along the east side of the street. All utilities will be extended with the street to serve the residences. And the majority of the stormwater for this development will be directed to the west to the existing Diamond Subdivision Detention Basin. Um, the developer will, developer will work with the city to modify that basin outlet structure to hold more drainage for a longer period of time to address the added stormwater flow and address stormwater quality. The remainder of the stormwater from this development will be, be directed to the east of the privately maintained, to a, to a privately maintained detention basin. Um, as far as lots on this, there's 35 lots and are expected 
to be in the $40,000 range with homes ranging from two seventy five dollars to $300,000. The minimum square footage that we're looking at through the covenants and restrictions are approximately 1,700 to 1,750 square feet. And the, they'll, the, the covenants and restrictions will be continued to be developed as, as we go through the process. And I think we'll have those ready to go. I believe they need to be ready to go before the, uh, this meets the council if it gets to that point. Um, for the rezoning case, as, as Ian mentioned, we're here tonight to, re to rezone the reserve tract A, which is highlighted on your handouts. Um, from RS2 to C C2, the property has been previously undeveloped and sits just south of the commercial driveway, commercial properties adjacent Missouri Boulevard. The rezoning of the property will provide additional space for expansion of redeve redevelopment of the commercial properties along the boulevard. And the properties further, further to the south have, de have developed as single family residents, so we're matching the character of that development. Reserve Tract A, the property being rezoned, is really would be considered an, a really unusable residential part of the development. The terrain is very rough. The residential lots proposed with this subdivision begin to get long and deep, and the increase in acreage thereby increased cost of the lots. The decision was made to downsize a portion of these lots and rezone it as commercial. And the intent of the, that rezoning is to classify this portion of the, the property as commercial prior to the single family homes being built and that gives potential buyers the notice that the adjacent property could be used as commercial purposes. The proposed commercial zoning is, is the most intense zoning the property could be used for, and there is a possibility that the reserve tract could develop as a less intense use or even residential development from the west. In that case, the property would actually have to be downzoned at that point. So really the intent is to present a sort of worst case scenario and adjust as needed in the future. The plan does provide an enhanced buffer yard at the rear lots between lots 8 and 18 or the east side of tract A and you'll see that on your subdivision handout. And what that does is it actually calls out a 50 foot natural buffer. So if you compare that to the code it's a type C buffer that would normally require a 35 foot natural buffer or a 50 foot open space buffer. So in actuality, we are great increasing the code requirement. The enhanced buffer was proposed due to the proximity of the potential commercial development at the back of those houses. And the buffer, it does not extend to the south side of tract A. And the reason for that is, is that those houses would be, be built closer to Sardanix Drive and they wouldn't have a direct view of the commercial property. Uh, so with that, I would entertain any questions. Is there any questions from the commission members from the applicant? I do have one question. Sure. You talked about the, the buffer between lots 8 and 18 and reserve tract A, would there not be a buffer on the north side of 17 and reserve tract A? I know that potentially you probably wouldn't build a residential structure that far down, but is, is there not a required buffer from there as Are well? 17 or 18? Uh, excuse me, I, I said that wrong. 7, lot 7 and reserve tract A, the side of 7? And that's what I was referring to on that on that south side of tract A. Okay. Um, the houses along lots one through seven would basically be clo built closer to Sardonic. So in that case, you're, you're, you're basically at yard areas in that area. So the buffer wouldn't necessarily be required in, er in that area. Now, if a commercial development would happen to come into that area, they would be Responsible. required to have buffers regardless. They would just be per the city code. They wouldn't be the enhanced buffer that we're showing on, on the plan. Let me see if there are any other any other questions from commission members. Yes, Chris. Is there is there a need for one on the west side of your reserve tract? Can you speak up? I did not. So, is there a need for a, a buffer on the west side of your reserve tract? 
there would be one it, it, as I said if if this develops ultimately develops as commercial property the commercial development would, would require an, a type C buffer whenever they develop the property so it's not necessarily going to be a larger buffer it's going to be per the code which would be the 35 foot natural or the or the 50 foot open space any other questions for the applicant from Commission members Eric I think you had something you'd like to state uh, yeah I have a few questions I was hoping to, uh, to ask the consultant just to clarify a few items and also just some some other staff information just to, to make sure everyone in attendance kind of understands the different different I, things I think here. while he's up here that'd be fine okay thank you um, oh and let me find the correct visual here so the and, and Patrick um, touched on this but this property right there which is part of the subdivision plat where the the mouse pointer is 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 currently zoned c2 general commercial and then the the proposal is to rezone everything here that's that's hatched out also to c2 general commercial to to match up with there but and, and you almost have to squint your eyes but that little partial track <laughs> right there is zoned single family residential and that is important from a uh, from a staff and a technical perspective and, and and a consultant referenced this but a commercial property cannot obtain its primary access from a residential street okay and so that um, that small bit of zoning right there is what would prevent uh, commercial access to that commercial property that is important and it was was something that was discussed you know in some of the pre-application meetings uh, on this this item uh, because commercial access from the street would 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 not be a good thing would not that's that's not something that um, it would would be typical especially at the end of a of, of a residential street so any fears that that there would be commercial access to this property I, I hope would be alleviated by the the recognition that 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 small bit of zoning right there prevents that and that was done on purpose okay well, Eric, I may ask you to come up and look at my plat and I've got terrible vision and maybe the consultant can confirm or tell me I'm wrong but maybe the Commission Commission members look at the subdivision plat <laughs> somebody tell me what that says right there over reserve tract I guess that would be B is that correct does that not say something to rezone to C2 was that a misprint I don't have a magnifying glass does everybody does everybody see what I see can I come forward or yeah please So right, I think what Eric was saying is this area right here will not be rezoned. It's going to stay residential. Does that say proposed rezoning to C2? Does anybody else see what I'm saying there? That, what you're referencing, is on the sketch plat. Um, I, I believe maybe it does say that. Um, but really what matters in this instance would be the subdivision plat. Okay good point and I'm assuming obviously the legal description for the rezoning would obviously govern all of that correct and I'm assuming that the rezoning legal description says reserve track day correct I, I I believe, yeah I believe that was a, a holdover from and that, that was something that if there was a note there it should have been removed okay. and and is not an issue okay. good point I'm fine with that I think for clarity though it's good okay, yes go ahead Sorry. Certainly, we'll look into that. Um, okay, and so second, um, second, there there's some some questions sur surrounding buffer yards, and of course, the zoning code has requirements for buffer yards built into it. Uh, specifically, whenever a commercial property develops, there there has to be a strip of land uh, with you know, either existing trees or new trees and a fence planted. Uh, there's a variety of options but that that applies anywhere where the commercial property borders up against uh, residential or a different zoning district so that would apply for the uh, for 
basically for the entire border here um, of, of all this property. Um, like I said, there's a variety of different methods for, for something like that to meet, uh, to, to meet the buffer yard standards. Uh, the consultant referenced that on the subdivision plat, they're actually, uh, you know, through the platting process, establishing a, a buffer yard that is greater than what that requirement is, at least for this one specific line, which would be the, 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 the part of the property that would most affect future residential homes along the, the Sardonyx extension. Um, the buffer yard requirements would still apply to the other lines, even though they're not shown on the plat. They don't have to be. The only reason this one's shown on the plat is because it e actually exceeds the buffer yard standards of the city, and so they're establishing it as a requirement by the plat. Um, and, and so it becomes a plat requirement um, rather than a city requirement because it exceeds the city requirement. requirement. I, I hope that that's clear. Um, I, I think you mentioned a little on stormwater, and I wanted to, to maybe have a visual representation of that. Um, and which draw? I, and so I'll speak on, on this drawing right here. Um, and so, uh, and, and uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. So, uh, the the road's a ridge line road, and so every you know all of the rain that falls on on this side of the road will will drain into the uh, the gully here, and then into the the city stormwater basin uh, that's already in place uh, there to the south. The the rain that falls on this side of the road, uh, some of it will be directed uh, to the road and will end up up over here basically the downspouts from the houses if I'm correct and uh, the remainder of the the rain that falls on the property and, and comes to the back to the backyard basically uh, will will fall into this uh, this gully and then drain down to and there would be a stormwater basin constructed uh, down on that drainage so basin so actually on the eastern side there's an existing pond on the adjacent property, the seller of the actual, uh, the the actual property that Ryan Pringer has bought. Um, so there was it's an existing pond with the bank, the actual pond bank was cut and the the pond was drained. So what's being proposed is that a new smaller pipe would be installed in that cut area of that pond bank, um, the pond bank reconstructed. And the smaller pipe would actually act as a detention pond as it would restrict the flow of any water that would flow to that area and and in doing so it it keeps the amount of stormwater flowing down through that that channel at a minimum or at at the actual flows that they are existing today does that answer your question I I think so. Um, it was an item that was was heavily discussed at the Planning and Zoning Commission, where the the, the preliminary plat was was under consideration. Um, as Ian referenced, I believe that was in des December, um, and you know it was important. In city staff felt it was important to make sure that there is a, a stormwater system in place there that does not result in in more stormwater coming downhill from there. So for anyone who who is concerned about the stormwater situation in the area. We want to make sure that they know that it was was heavily looked at by city staff and uh, please correct me if I'm wrong complies with the requirements of the the stormwater requirements of the city code uh, that are applicable to the property Is there anything else? Um, uh, that's kind of the questions and things I was hoping to clarify I, I think I'd be happy to is there any other that. questions uh, from the commission members for city staff or for the applicant? I'm, I might throw one last thing out there, and I'll, I'll try to be brief. The the applicant has stated that reserve tract A would be rezoned to commercial, and I think it's great that they're proposing that 50-foot buffer there now so that anyone that buys those lots are is made aware that there's commercial potentially behind them. But the comment was made that, let's go to C2 we know that's kind of the worst case scenario and then if somebody from the west comes in and wants to do something different we might down zone it my thought would be in just just for planning purposes and developmental purposes should the the, the buffer that they're proposing state that if the property is used as commercial so it would say a 50-foot 
type C natural buffer if used as commercial. What I'm getting at is if, and maybe this is a, an attorney question, but if this is put on here as a 50 foot buffer and then someone comes back and rezones it back to residential because they can get in there from the west, mm -hmm. then it may restrict what could happen there. And if it was residential versus residential, we wouldn't require a buffer. I'm not trying to complicate things. I'm just trying to make it as going forward, one for planning and zoning purposes and city staff issues. If that said, if used as commercial, is that? Yeah, yeah, I, I can completely understand that that statement because you're, I, I believe, correct. It becomes a uh, uh, a, a plat requirement uh, regardless of what the use is there might be ways to phrase the language a little bit different I, I'm a little bit hesitant to to have things that such as that on on a plat personally um, uh, because you don't know what the future might entail um, but we have seen you know buffer yards on plats before and you know it you know could be that you know maybe there's a future residential use but still you know a, a promise to the the future homeowners along that street that there will be 50 feet of natural buffer behind them is a pretty strong promise regardless of whatever the property might be used for and I you know they might feel better that having that in place regardless obviously of what might be used for obviously I'll go back to that be a decision of the the consultant and the the owner of the property or if they want to do that but does the city staff have if that's an option to put in there that 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 buffer would only be there if used commercially is that a reasonable amendment to I, I don't think that we can really take uh, anything uh, above and beyond what the normal buffer yard requirements are for between the C2 and the, the RS districts and, and really uh, make a recommendation on it if, if that makes if you understand that okay. yeah, I think so any other questions for the consultant or the applicant or city staff Okay, thank, thank you. you. At this point in the process, um, we have a three-step uh, position. The first is we are going to ask anyone in the audience who would like to come up and speak in favor of either of these requests. Then we will ask anyone who likes to speak in opposition, and then we will close out with anyone in the audience who would just like to speak. So again, we will go with those in favor, go through all of those, go through all of these that are opposed, and then we'll finish up with anyone that just would like to make comment. So with that, I will ask, is there anyone in the audience who'd like to come forward and speak in favor of this request? Please come forward and state your name and address for the record. I'm Ryan Pringer, 3925 Autumn Woods Lane and uh, I'm the applicant for this development. Um, I've been a residential builder in Jefferson City here for 20 years, um, developed a few other subdivisions and I'm real excited about this one. Um, with that in mind, <clears throat> we've, always, we've gone into this with consideration for current homeowners and the quality of our new residential subdivision. Um, we've made several, um, put several things in place to improve the current road and, and and really current properties um, like like was said before we're gonna have uh, stricter restrictions than what's currently out there um, our homes are gonna have a higher square footage requirement so we're not gonna be uh, going in there doing lower quality or lower uh, square footage than what's currently there and bringing down any home values um, right now the street uh, dead ends which is not very convenient and when this goes through, uh, uh, if this goes through, our street will uh, end in a cul-de-sac, which will make a lot easier for large vehicles to be able to turn around. Right now, they have to back in and out of the area if they want to get in there. Um, the people at the end of the street right now have any traffic that comes down there turning around in their driveways, um, and that that will go away. We've also put a uh, significant curve in the road that you can you probably noticed uh, we feel like that's going to help control speed going into the subdivision from our development people are going to have to you know slow down not be 
shooting through there real fast. Um, and I think the other guys have pretty much addressed anything uh, and everything else. Um, but I can answer any questions that you all have. All right. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Pringer? Thank you. Thank you. Again, I will ask, is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak in favor of this request? Please come forward. All right, seeing none, I will ask, is there anyone in opposition to this request? Please come forward and state your name and address for the record. Seeing none. Lastly, I'll ask, is there anyone who would like to speak on this request? Please come forward. If you would, give us your name and address for the record, sir. Uh, yes, uh, my name's Les Fortenberry. I live at 921 Garnett Point, which is the cul-de-sac off of Sardonyx. Um I just I just wanted to clarify one thing that deals with uh, the basin on the east side uh, it's uh, the detention plan sheet number five if my lot is right where that existing pond dam breach comes out it hits the upper corner of my lot cuts diagonally across and probably six to eight times a year I have a smooth wall 24 inch culvert that I, I put across that ditch so I can mow the part of my lot that's on the opposite side and probably six eight times a year that cover will barely handle the amount of water that comes through the existing breach and when we have really big events every year and a half two years I've had as much as eight inches of water coming over the top where that culvert at two feet wasn't remotely adequate so I'm I'm looking at this cross section we're going to have a 12 inch pipe and it appears to be five feet of elevation that's just compacted dirt will there be any kind of concrete cap on that to act as a spillway like on the city basin I, I'm worried about potential for overtopping that five foot and having unchecked erosion start when that 12 inch pipe won't handle that water so that was kind of okay. what I would like. I'll, to I'll ask that you address those things to us, and then we'll we'll try okay. to get them wrapped up for you. Okay. And we may not have the answer just yet. What we're going to do is let sure. let everybody talk and, and address okay. things like that. Sure. If city staff can't answer it, we will ask the applicant to come back okay. up. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Anything else, sir? No. That's okay. That's any fine. any questions? I think we have a question for I you. I do. Yep. Who sized your pipe? I mean, was it sized by somebody, or did you just put a pipe? No. Uh, actually. Uh, I had a neighbor that used to be in construction that had a short piece of culvert that was too small for them to use for anything and so I dropped it in that existing ditch just that so I could bridge that and get my riding mower over to mow so we're, we're not sure that that's adequately sized to carry the storm is that, that's what I'm asking right okay um, thank you but it is twice the size of the proposed pipe for the the basin so that's why you know. okay any other questions thank you sir for your testimony Again, I'll ask, is there anyone in the audience who would like to come up and speak on this request? If you would, please come up and state your name and address for the record. Hi, I'm Aaron Talby. I live at 925 Sardonyx. I have a question about the city-owned retention. Right now, it's already at its capacity. What steps are being put in to make sure that the extra excess water from that would be able to hold? I've, I've seen it at the top of the bridge going to Sardonyx already close to it so I don't know if it can handle it if it can handle it I have no problem very good thank you sir is there any, don't run off on me is there anyone that has any questions thank you sir for your testimony again I'll ask is there anyone in the audience who'd like to come and speak on this request okay at this please come forward Again, if you'd state your name and address for the record, we'd appreciate it. Maureen Rucker, I live at 937 Sardonyx Drive. And I know it may be kind of a minor concern, but one of the things that we in the neighborhood really enjoy is the wildlife that is there. We have deer in our backyard, we have turkeys that are in our backyard, squirrels, um, rabbits, all kinds of things like that. And we're already seeing a movement with a lot of the deer that normally we don't see you know 15 20 deer at a time and we're seeing that now 
Um, and I'm just wondering what is going to happen to all the wildlife when they start doing more of the developing on the land because if it's going to get rid of all the wildlife, that's going to be a real disappointment to a lot of the neighbors. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on this request? Please come forward and state your name and address for the record. Dwayne Rucker, 937 Sardonyx. Uh, other than the wildlife that my wife just spoke about, uh, and some of the some of the traffic that I've noticed, I say traffic, wildlife that's already been struck on 179, and I don't know if that's because of the displacement of the deer that are from the um, from the construction in the neighborhood. But my concern, or maybe my question for the developers, is the future connectivity. Right now, there's 35 lots. Uh, what would be the projected future connectivity to go all the way around to uh, uh, where it comes out on Edgewood? Okay. Okay. I mean, if th my question, if they could address, if it's proposed next year, two years, because we're looking. So you're asking for a, you're asking for a time frame if they have an idea. A time frame of the connectivity, because okay. I'm I'm seeing approximately 35 homes, average at a minimum two cars per house and what the anticipation of if that connectivity is prior they're looking at that connectivity of the prior to the connectivity 35 homes so if you add to that connectivity there's going to be x number of houses on that east side of that uh, connector for that Pringer Pringer subdivision so okay. anything else that, that is it any questions thank you sir Is there anyone else in the audience who would like to speak on this request? Please come forward. Okay. At that point, we will, I think what we will do is um, maybe have city staff uh, address some of the questions that were brought up by the citizens. Um, I think we have a couple of w water issues that we direct towards Shane. Um, maybe planning staff could address wildlife and connectivity time issues so whoever would like to start um, in regard to some of the questions about the eastern basin um, uh, some of the comments that uh, we are re have returned to the consultant would be uh, for the outlet as far as erosion control uh, if there's any type of rock blanket or anything that's necessary on the lower side of the the basin outlet uh, so that's one thing that we wanted as well to have them take a look at I realize that it's a private basin and so but we just want to make sure that we're not going to uh, cause any undue erosion beyond the the basin berm that's been proposed um, as far as uh, the overtopping of the basin um, I believe on the plans they call for a erosion control type blanket to be placed uh, over the top of the dam structure uh, in order to make sure that the turf that's proposed there is reinforced. Um, also, the calculations that have been proposed, it appears that the uh, basin itself uh, will uh, detain quite a bit more uh, uh, storm water than what um, has been uh, identified as what the development would uh, generate in regard to the impervious area that's headed that way so um, at this point we feel like that that uh, would uh, be adequate to uh, uh, address the additional drainage that would uh, be seen from the development uh, with the basin that's proposed as far as the uh, existing basin uh, to the west in the diamonds uh, area the diamonds subdivision uh, currently the basin that is there uh, that was proposed with the diamonds detention basin is approximately a little bit over two acres in size um, the uh, lower flow pipe that goes through that basin is a 24 inch pipe um, what we would want to see is a uh, further constriction of that pipe in order to uh, basically make the detention basin more frequent in regard to the lower storms and to address the amount of water that's coming off of uh, the new basin uh, the city has been 
looking at all of our basins across the city to modify a lot of the uh, the outlet structures to uh, try to meet our EPA and DNR standards as far as stormwater quality. And in that process, what that does is actually uh, utilize the basin. You'll see more water in it at, at, at more times uh, because it'll be further constricted on the lower side. Um, there's uh, plenty of storage to handle both uh, this development and uh, what is there now. What you see as far as the spillway, there may be some additional modifications in the future, but we want to be real careful about that upper spillway as far as modifications because we don't want to impact any of the existing neighborhood residents that are around that basin and cause any undue issues with the back portions of their yards. Uh, so at this point, I believe... Um, we let's see if that I think that should address both of the questions I believe that I had unless there's any other further cl clarifications that are necessary. Does any commission members have any questions for Shane regarding his response to the citizens' requests on stormwater? Thank you, Shane. Eric, will you address the other issues regarding um, wildlife and future connectivity? Yes, I'll I'll try to um, first. Uh, for future connectivity um, and that was a, an item that uh, was not only discussed at some of our uh, pre-meetings with uh, uh, the consultant um, but also at the the, uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting where the, the uh, sketch plat was under consideration um, there is no timeline for the the future extension of that road there's no no immediate plans uh, to construct it in fact one of the reasons it's it's shown in, in being constructed as a um, as a cul-de-sac bulb well, as a cul-de-sac bulb right there is to provide for a, a permanent turnaround until you know such future date as, as uh, uh, a connection there and a wraparound uh, street constructed so it, uh, it could be uh, a very long time into the future but it could also be very short um, uh, it, it allows for that connectivity but there, there is no uh, the 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 owner of that property has no immediate plans to to undertake such a project. Now, regarding uh, wildlife, and that's a question that that we often receive. Um, there, there are notes on the the grading portions of the uh, improvement plans that have been submitted to the city. You know, f which you know include the uh, construction of the various utilities and. Uh, detention basins and such but notes to ensure that um, only the minimum amount of trees is removed in order to make the lots uh, uh, clear the portion that would be be for the houses but to keep the the back portions of the lots uh, wooded not remove trees where they're not necessary and so uh, that would uh, basically result in a significant portion of of the property remaining wooded so okay any questions for Eric regarding his responses Okay, um, I think at this point I will ask the consultant or the owner if they would like to address any of this or are accepting city staff's recommendations on detention basins and other things. If you would, please please come forward and come up and let me know you'll accept them. Yeah, I think Eric and Shane both did a pretty good job of explaining what we name, needed to be said. Address. So we are good with their give me your name and address too. Oh, sorry Patrick Kramer 2500 East McCarty Street okay. but regarding the the issues with Shane or any staff comments you guys are okay with that yes thank you any questions for the applicant before he leaves us okay thank you um, at that point we will close uh, testimony good with that okay we'll close public testimony I think uh, we'll move over to a staff report Regarding the, the comprehensive plan amendment uh, and rezoning request, uh, the development plan map of the comprehensive plan uh, designates this area as intended for residential use as well as commercial. It would appear at the time uh, that it would appear that the border between the two districts was drawn in a way that would suggest that the limits where residential development and commercial development would eventually meet were unknown. Uh, the recent approval of the preliminary plat of Pringer Ridge subdivision, uh, the line has been made clear uh, where those limits are. Uh, the, the proposed amendment to the development plan map of the comprehensive plan would be in keeping with the, the, the plan.
planning, uh, the current planning of the area. Uh, as far as the, the rezoning request, the requested commercial zoning would be a benefit to the area to allow for the expansion of the existing commercial area, and staff recommends approval of the request to rezone the property from RS2 to C2 general commercial. And then for the, the subdivision plat, the final subdivision plat meets the requirements for subdivision plats as outlined in the subdivision code. A staff recommends approval of the plat documents subject to comments and technical corrections of the planning and engineering divisions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ian. Do any of the commission members have any questions for Ian or other city staff at this point? Okay. Again, um, I think what we'll do here is... Mr. Chair, if yes. I uh, did Shane, Shane, did you have a I thought report? I would add just a oh, couple... Oh, go ahead. Sorry, Shane. Support. No, you're fine. That's fine. Uh, in regard to the stormwater, just to make sure that, that I've got a couple other items that I wanted to kind of clarify. Um, as far as the basin uh, that's on the west side on the Diamonds Detention Basin, basically that'll be uh, at least at a minimum uh, constricting the lower flow pipe uh, with a, a steel plate of some uh, of some design uh, that we're preliminary looking at it maybe a 15 or an 18 inch size uh, equivalent pipe to modify that basin to to further constrict uh, the lower flow pipe uh, the lower flows on that that basin um, we'd also indicate that any of the utilities and the uh, are in conformance with the city standards sidewalk is also proposed on the east side with parking removal on proposed on the west portion of uh, the new street uh, and then also sewers have been proposed to extend uh, within the subdivision to serve all the new lots and that we would also recommend approvals of the subdivision plat subject to those technical corrections okay Thank you, Shane. Do uh, any commission members have any questions for Shane? Again, Shane, my apologies. Um, with that, um, we will move to uh, a motion. Uh, and I think like I started uh, this hearing, let's do these independently. Um, so we will entertain a motion regarding case number P19010. It is the 700 block of Sardonyx Drive. It is a rezoning from RS-2 to C-2 and a comprehensive plan amendment. Do we want to do the comprehensive plan separately? Yes. Okay, we'll do that first. Um, depending on if it's approved or denied, then we would move on to the official rezoning. So we'll entertain a motion. I'll move to approve the comprehensive plan amendment request to show the property as commercial on the development de development plan map of the comprehensive plan. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries 7 to 0. Next I will ask for a motion regarding the rezoning of the property from RS2 to C2. I move to approve the request to rezone the property from RS2 to C2. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries again 7 to 0. Uh, this will be forwarded to the City Council. Uh, again, that will be a public hearing. And Ian, when will we be at City Council? The, the meeting before the City Council will be April 15th, and that's, that's Monday at 6 p.m. here in these chambers. April 15th in this room at 5 p.m.? 6 p.m. 6 p.m. April 15th at 6 p.m. Okay, next we will move on to case number P19011, Sardonyx Drive. It is the final subdivision plat of Pringer Ridge Subdivision. I will entertain a motion. I would make a motion to approve Pringer Ridge Finals subdivision plat subject to comments and technical corrections of the planning and engineering divisions. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries 7 to 0. Uh, again, uh, Ian, will this be forwarded to the City Council? Yes, that's correct. April 15th, 6 p.m. in this room? Yes. Very good. Thank you. Thank you all for coming this evening. Um, we'll move on to, I think what we'll do is Bunny, you, and Hank are both leaving. 
If you guys want to depart, we'll let you do that, and then we'll move on to other business. Thank you, everyone, for coming this evening. Yeah, I was going to ask, sir, if you'd like. Uh, we're going we're to continue our meeting. If you'd uh, obviously uh, give City Hall a call, they'd be glad to address those concerns with you. We will move on to our other business this evening. We have uh, the staff updates on prior cases. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we have some updates on the prior cases that were uh, that came before the Planning and Zoning Commission in January. Uh, the rezoning on Hoover Road from um, PUD to M1 uh, was approved by the City Council, um, as well as the Board of Adjustment approved a conditional use permit for outdoor storage for that site, uh, and that just happened this, this last month, on Tuesday. Um, there was a case for uh, short-term rental at 612 East McCarty that was approved by the City Council. Uh, the short-term rental that was uh, proposed at 1500 Timber Trail was denied by City Council. And we have an, a presentation by one of our transportation planners, and they will go over that at this time. Uh, real quick before we do that, um, I would ask that I was contacted regarding the uh, Hoover Road rezoning, and my understanding is that they're already requesting variances to setbacks and whatnot the 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 request that was made um was made in relation to uh, approved uses in the m1 zoning district uh, was for outdoor storage a conditional conditional use permit for outdoor storage uh, there were no variances involved in that request okay um but that was the uh the intent of the use of the property from the beginning so they were just asking for the permission to have outdoor storage, which was discussed when they were here with us? Yes. Okay. Very good. Thank you for clarification on that. Uh, we have a presentation this evening. Would you like to come forward and let us know what you got? I'm so glad I can speak to such a large audience. <laughs> <laughs> would you like the, like the three-minute version or the seven-minute version? Well, um, in all honesty, do you want my honest opinion? We'll take the three-minute. Three-minute version it yes. is. Yeah, the, the pay grade here is not the best, so we'll take the three-minute. <laughs> you, so, you take the time you need, but th three to seven would be wonderful. That's fine. So my name is Katrina Williams. I'm a transportation planner with the Capital Area Metropolitan Planning Organization, um, which is uh, within the planning division with the city. Um, is there anybody not familiar with what Campo is and what we do? We're all good? Okay. So we do long-range transportation planning. Um, we're mostly federally funded. We have an area of about 73,000 people, seven member jurisdictions. Here's a brief map of our region. Um, so we go all the way up into Holt Summit, over to Taos, St. Martins, Wardsville, and of course Jefferson City. Pretty good portion of Cole County and a little bit of Callaway. Um, what I'm here to talk to you about tonight, and if you hear nothing else, uh, we have a public meeting next Tuesday night March 19th. You should have a flyer um, with your information there. Um, it's going to go from 4 to 6, um, and we would love for you to come by, tell all your friends, um, and come and talk to us about any transportation issues or needs that you see um, coming up over the next 25 years. Um, so as a metropolitan planning organization, we're responsible for several products. I won't go through all of them, uh, but one of them is our Metropolitan Transportation Plan. So that Metropolitan Transportation Plan has a 25-year planning horizon, and we're looking at transportation needs, land use needs. Um, we're assessing 
several different kinds of needs. Um, we're setting goals and we're defining policies for how we can address those those items and um, defining how we could um, implement those goals and strategies. Um, we're required to look at roads and bridges, of course, because that's the, the bulk of what we look at, but we're also required to look at pedestrian issues and non-motorized issues like um, bicycle use, even scooter use, um, air, railway, um, waterways and ports and freight. So we need to look at all modes of transportation while doing this plan. Um, we used a method called scenario planning while developing this plan um, where we took um, what we um, important variables like future land use, current land use, um, and zoning, blended that all together and looked at um, uh, p possible scenarios for how we would develop as a region. So we developed uh, four different scenarios. We have a, a trend scenario, so that's what this graphic is, and this is from our public meeting from last October. If everything stays the same and we continue to develop at about the same pace that we've developed over the last 20 or 30 years, this is what we can expect for our development. So the darker, um, the darker the squares, the more residential development, the more dense the residential development we could expect. Um, those circles are um, denoting um, commercial development areas and industrial um, development areas. Um, for our um, for our analysis, we really pay a lot of attention to residential development. That's really some of the most important stuff because that's generating a lot more congestion for us. So of those four scenarios, we have the trend, which is what, what we would expect uh, based on what we've seen in the last 20 to 30 years. Um, and then we developed a scenario that looked at, well, what if we intensified it in those unincorporated areas just outside of Jefferson City? Um, another scenario was what if we intensified development in the central city, um, keeping with neighborhood plans that have recently been passed. So we had a, a south side plan and a central east side plan. Um, so we took those plans and said, well, if we develop how these are specified, you know, what would that look like? So we just add a little intensity um, to the inner core of the community. Um, and then we um, doubled the growth. Um, originally it was supposed to be tripled. But after doing some math, <laughs> um, we actually had doubled it. We did not triple the amount of growth. Um, that was clarified earlier today. Um, so we looked at these four different scenarios. And um, we're going to have a public meeting next week to present that to the public and figure out which scenario we think is the most likely out of those four. We've developed a vision statement. Um, based on our public input we've received and we've developed goals and strategies. Um, you have a handout, looks like this, that has those goals and strategies on it. Um, I would love to hear back from you if you have any comments on anything you think we missed or something you think we should pay more attention to. Um, feel free to contact us or come to that meeting next week. We're anticipating having this plan adopted by June. Um, if all goes well, that's our schedule. Um, we've already identified a lot of needs through a lot of planning mechanisms over the last few years. So we have a bike ped plan where we identified a lot of issues with um, pedestrian and non-motorized um, items. We have a coordinated public transit human services transportation plan. It's a mouthful, but it's a transit plan that we have to update every um, three years. So we've, we gather um, and identify needs through that process as well. We did a safety assessment on Missouri Boulevard. We did a transit assessment specific to Jeff Tran, and we have a wayfinding plan. So we've done a lot of planning over the last few years that have given us a lot of identified needs and potential projects um, that have been funneled into this plan. Um, so far, through stakeholder and public input, we've received more um, potential projects and strategies around safety, uh, specifically for pedestrian like sidewalks and crosswalks, um, enhanced shoulders, um, capacity issues, so adding lanes and extensions and ramps to our roadways, um, improving access and connectivity with our greenways and our transit and our bike lanes, so creating um, an intermodal system where you can use different modes of transportation within the region. And um, of course, preservation comes up as the number one thing. So we want to maintain what we have now so that it works efficiently. So what we need from you um, is for you to review, sorry, trying to talk really fast, to review those goals and strategies that are on that um, handout that you have. Um, and Please come to the meeting if you're able to, um, and please share that meeting date and time with others so that they could um, either provide input at the meeting or go to our website. Um, you can contact us by emailing us directly at campo at jeffcitymo.org or by going to the website that we set up for the, the project, which is www.campo2045.com. That has all of our um, 
public participation materials on that website so you can see what we presented at the public meeting in October and um, after this meeting on the 19th we'll have all that information up there too as well as a draft plan coming in April any questions any questions for Katrina thank you for the brief version um, this uh, meeting that you're hosting on the 19th I'm assuming will be in this room it will be in the Boone Bancroft room right across, across the hall, the hall. Mm -hmm. okay. awesome again any questions for Katrina thank you appreciate yeah. your presentation with that I'll ask is there anything from Commission members or city staff we are adjourned thanks everyone for coming <laughs>